Certified in Risk and Information Systems Control, CRISC, Exam Review Part 4. Risk Assessment and Analysis. In this chapter, uh, you will review the process of risk identification, evaluation and assessment, learn about qualitative and quantitative risk assessment techniques, understand how to evaluate existing controls for effectiveness, assess gaps between current and target states of risk in the IT environment, consider risk ownership and accountability during risk analysis, and be able to report risk results to appropriate levels of management. Question one, what is the first step in risk management? A, risk evaluation, B, risk classification, C, risk identification, D, risk response. And the correct answer is C, risk identification. Risk identification is the first step in risk management. So the correct answer, again, is C. Okay, right here. Question number two. Which of the following steps in the four-step NIST risk assessment guidance uh, could be accomplished after identifying threat, sources, and events? A. Determining magnitude of impact. B. Identifying vulnerabilities and predisposing conditions. C. Determining likelihood of occurrence. Or D. Determining risk. And the correct answer is B. Identifying vulnerabilities and predisposing conditions. So uh, in the NIST assessment guidance, uh, identify vulnerabilities and predisposing conditions comes immediately after identifying threat sources and events. Question three, which two of the following factors are the primary focus during risk evaluations? A, likelihood, B, impact, C, threat, D, vulnerability, and the correct answers are A, uh, likelihood, and B, impact. Question four, which of the following techniques uses subjective terms for its evaluation? A, statistical, B, quantitative, C, asset valuation, D, qualitative, and the correct answer is D, qualitative. Qualitative techniques use subjective terms such as high, medium, and low for their evaluations. Question five, which of the following quantitative formulas is used to express the annualized loss expectancy, or ALE, and the correct answer is D. So the, uh, basically, ALE, uh, it's equal, the, the product of SLE times the ARO, the um, annualized uh, rate of occurrence. Question six. Uh, given an asset value or AV of twenty thousand dollars and an exposure factor of five percent, you know, of zero point five, what is the annualized loss expectancy (ALE) where a specific negative event is expected to occur once every two years? And I kind of cheated a little bit over here, so I I put these formulas over here for you to look at, um, just in case you don't uh, remember. But actually, the previous question just basically talk about this. So to calculate, first of all, in order to find the ALE, we need to know the SLE. And the SLE, it's the asset value, which is 20,000, times the exposure factor, which is 0 0.5, which is then you know 10,000. So that 10,000, which is the SLE, times 
uh, 0.5, which is the ARL, then you know that produces the ALE, which is so the correct answer then is 5,000. Question seven, which of the following assessment methodologies uses a workshop uh, methodology and is uh, specifically intended for large organizations? Um, okay, so the correct answer here is octave. Octave is the pronunciation. And, and basically, uh, this is a methodology and um, it, it stands for Operationally Critical Threat, Asset, and Vulnerability Evaluation. Uh, it, you know, it uses teams performing in workshops, and it was designed for a large organization with, uh, you know, more than 300 employees. Question 8. Which of the following evaluation processes in the ISACA risk IT framework is concerned with analyzing risk? And the correct answer is B. Uh, this is one of those things that when you study for in your guide, you're going to have to kind of uh, memorize. So um, analyze risk is the process, uh, uh, step two, used for risk analysis in the risk IT framework. Question nine. Uh, okay, so question nine. Uh, which of the following data collection methods is the most subjective? And the correct answer is B. <coughs> interviews. So interviews are by far the most objective data collection method since people uh, may offer opinion or mistaken uh, or basically just false information. Question 10. You have a system administrator who you're working with during a risk assessment. The system administrator insists that adequate permissions are assigned to system files. Which of the following methods could you use to visually confirm the system administrator's assertion? Uh, a, documentation review, B, fault tree analysis, C, interviews, D, system observations, and the correct answer here is D, systems observations. Uh, directly observing the system in operation, including examining the permissions on sensitive system files, would be uh, one way to confirm the system administrator's claim. Question 11. Which of the following must be examined after threats, vulnerability, assets, likelihood, and impact are taken into consideration in order to adequately analyze risk? And the correct answer is A, controls. So existing controls uh, must be examined to determine how well they reduce likelihood or impact uh, to a system in the event that a threat actually occurs. Question 12. Which of the following types of analysis examines an event strictly from the cost perspective? And the correct answer here is C. Uh, fault tree analysis. So basically, uh, fault, uh, fault tree analysis focuses on an event and all of its potential causes. Question 13. Which of the following standards is primarily concerned with risk assessment? Again, this is one of those things that you have to kind of memorize for, for, for this test. The correct answer here is C. ISO IEC uh, 31010. Uh, so this um, standard primarily focuses on risk assessment processing methodologies. Question 14. Which of the following terms describes the difference between how controls are currently functioning and the level that they need to be functioning at? And this should be a given. The correct answer here is uh, control gap. 
Question 15. Which of the following terms describes an entity responsible for controls used across several different assets and systems within the organization? And the correct answer here is A. A common controls provider. Question 16. Once a risk assessment is completed and recommended controls are put into place, at what level should residual risk fall? And the correct answer is B. Uh, within risk appetite and tolerance levels for the organization. So remember we talked in, uh, before that it is impossible to eliminate all risks. So basically uh, what you do is that you uh, mitigate or you reduce risk to an acceptable level. Now, that acceptable level, uh, which is you know kind of like acceptable ranges, uh, given the organization's risk appetite and tolerance levels, it it's, uh, basically depends, this is management, senior management discretion, right? Uh, the top executives, the board of directors, they are the ones who decide what is acceptable or not. This is not IT. Uh, uh, job. This is not the you know the CISO, the you know cybersecurity administrator. It is senior management uh, descriptions you know that decides you know what is acceptable and what is not. Question seventeen: Which of the following is the most critical point to convey to managers when communicating the results of a risk assessment? And the correct answer here is D. How IT risk relates to any impact on business processes and operations. This is very important. This is basically out of these choices over here. This is what um, you know uh, what senior management wants to hear. Question 18: Who should a risk assessor communicate the results of a risk assessment to? And the correct answer is D. Only those personnel who have been formally designated and approved to receive the information by senior management. Question 19. Which of the following should be updated after a risk assessment, uh, especially if and when risk conditions change? Choose two. Well, you need to uh, definitely update the risk register and obviously uh, see the risk profile also changes when that happens. And uh, finally, question 20. When performing a control analysis, which of the following is the main concern? And the correct answer here is C. Uh, how effective a control is at providing protection for an asset. All right, so um, this is the end of part four. In part uh, five of this uh, C-Risk exam review, uh, we will uh, deal with questions related to risk response and mitigation. All right, so I'll see you uh, next time.